Hey everyone, my name is Tulsi Doshi, and I lead product for Responsible AI at Google. My role is to help make sure that we're building products for everyone. And so today, I'm here to talk about my lessons learned as I've been thinking about how do I build machine learning in a way that is safe, responsible, and inclusive. So I'm going to start with the scene from Bridgerton season two. I bet many of you have already seen this show, but if you haven't, I would highly recommend. As a South Asian woman who has always loved a good love story, to see someone who looks like me represented on screen, and to see rituals that I've grown up with be a natural part of the story, that's what representation and inclusion is all about. It's about feeling seen. And so then it's critical that when we build and design models, especially models that are going to translate into the way that users experience our products, we do so in a way such that they work for every user. Whether it's ensuring diverse creator voices succeed on YouTube, any accent can get appropriate help from the assistant, or any face can successfully and safely unlock their phone. So what does it look like to really build models intentionally with responsibility and product inclusion in mind? Well, let's talk about an example on search. To build an inclusive experience requires recognizing that different users may have different needs and intents from searching, and that the web has a lot of content that may not always be relevant and can actually sometimes be shocking or hurtful. And that requires intentional development in order to address. On search, the real bread and butter of the work is understanding what a user is looking for when they say something, also known as query understanding. And so just like feeling seen is such an important part of representation, being understood and reducing exposure to harmful types of misrepresentation that might exist on the web is also such a critical part of what it means to be inclusive and representative. In Google search, part of making sure you can find helpful results is also making sure you don't find the ones that you're not looking for, especially if they perpetuate negative stereotypes or biases. We know that this is a challenge that can disproportionately impact women and communities of color. So we take it very seriously and have been working hard to help people steer clear of this kind of shocking content. Queries can have many different interpretations based on where you are, what language you speak, whether it's related to a recent event. And that's part of the magic of what machine learning brings to the table, because even words can have different meaning, right? Let's say you typed in the word M-O-L-E. Are you looking for a mole like the animal? Are you looking for dermatological information? Or do you want some delicious mole recipes? And as it relates to product inclusion, what if terms that are neutral or innocuous are referenced on explicit content? Then if we don't understand the meaning behind your query, we might match your search to that explicit content and then that can dominate the search results. So we leveraged an advancement called BERT to ensure that we actually understood the meaning of these queries independent of the web results, so that we could improve queries for experiences like Latina yoga instructor, um, reducing and demoting problematic content to make sure that the product is actually safe and inclusive. And what's honestly really cool is that in the process of improving these queries, we improved the overall experience for every user who searches, including for more general queries like college dorm party. And this is the beginning of a longer intentional journey in how do you build product inclusion into the algorithms, into the systems that are driving our products, one where we have to continue to invest in how we build for a broader audience. So how do we actually drive this work? And how do you, as someone who is building and driving these machine learning systems, build this into your experiences? Well, it starts with your everyday decisions. Who else? What are the assumptions behind the decisions that we're making? Who are our decisions serving? What is the objective function of our model uh, intended to actually serve? Who are the end users? And what are the assumptions behind the decisions that we're making? Our products are a reflection of the choices that we make throughout the model development process, right? Every choice we make during that development process affects the next, de next decision we make and affects the way that the user can actually engage downstream. Sometimes even small choices, choices that seem obvious or innocuous, can lead to major differences in the end experience. I'm actually going to start with an example that is not a machine learning example, but I think really illustrates this question of how our decisions can affect downstream impact. The person you see on the left, his name is Shirley. She's a Kodak model and was well known across the Kodak printing ecosystem and the camera ecosystem for many years. 
Shirley cards, as they became known, images of a woman named Shirley, um, were actually used to calibrate color. So you can see behind her multicolored pillows, the idea was that this would help us understand how a camera's color calibration was working. And Shirley's, you know, were sometimes wearing pearls, gloves, hats, swimming suits, but in the early days, all of them were white. And as a result of that, as a result of that calibration choice, the chemicals coating the film for cameras simply weren't adequate to capture a diversity of darker skin tones. And what's funny is it wasn't until chocolatiers and wood manufacturers complained about the quality of the film that we saw a change, that we saw an ability to have images with less lighting challenges, less ashen looking skin colors, uh, things like that. What you see here is the result of a very simple, innocuous decision, the desire to collect a single image uh, to, uh, to calibrate film. And what you see on the right is a much more nuanced representative image to enable that. When we think about machine learning, it's the same question. How do the decisions that we make at each step of the process affect the end outcome for a user? Because unfairness can enter into the system at any point in the pipeline, whether that is data collection and handling, and where we're collecting the data from, who is collecting the data, how is that data being collected, to how we label that data, to training using specific objectives, and whether or not our objectives are appropriate for the majority and the minority, to how the users experience the data and the effect that they see. And then that, of course, goes back and filters into the data that we're collecting. And often, it's not even a single one of these. There's not a single cause or a single solution. More often, it's various causes that interact in these systems that produce problematic outcomes. And therefore, a range of solutions is needed. And so ideally, we try to identify what are root causes or areas of opportunities to move forward, but these aren't going to be one size fits all problems. And honestly, you as a practitioner don't have to have all the answers. In fact, many times the strength of a strong team is bringing in a diversity of voices and recognizing that internally and externally and across an organization that the different perspectives that we bring to the table may actually help us identify where those biases are being coming from. So with this, I wanna talk about an example building on our Shirley example earlier and a huge shout out here to the Google Pixel uh, and Realtone teams for driving this work where they were asking the question of how do we make camera products inclusive of all skin tones? And what they found as they started to investigate this space is that there is no single ground truth for what a good image looks like, right? Often what is good in this context is subjective. And so the teams worked directly with a range of image experts who were celebrated for their beautiful and accurate imagery of people to bring them together, especially those who are experts in building imagery of people of color. And with these experts, the team identified ways in which camera products may not be effectively tuned to support skin of color. For example, making the final image look ashy. And so with that insight and with their support, the team was actually able to make changes to specifically change our approaches to auto exposure and auto white balance to create natural, more beautiful portraits of skin. skin that feels like you, the way that you expect to be seen and reflected in imagery. And this isn't about removing a bias or being blind to color, it's about the unique needs and building for communities of color. It's about ensuring that the models that we build understand systemic biases and that we are building to directly address them. And so that's a key thing I think to think about as you're building models. How do we remove the biases that might exist, but also how do we build for? How do we build with? And how do we embed that into our design process? The last lesson is don't underestimate your own voice. My journey in Responsible AI started as a product manager for recommendations in YouTube. And as I was working on recommendations, one of the concerns we heard was from creator communities about how YouTube was working for them. And so we started a proactive effort at YouTube to understand and improve the way our systems work for a diversity of creators. As I started to learn more in this space, I worked with and found leadership who were excited about the idea. And one of the really key things that I learned in the process was how important it is to find champions who are willing to give you and the idea a platform. 
Now, this work around ML fairness is an active part of YouTube's development process, directly in partnership with creators. And we're building up this work and momentum across Google. And so that's why you are a part of your team, your perspective. Your work voice has power. Find it, own it, share it. Find the champions around you who value your voice and your opinion, even if that's a small idea about the way that we're collecting the data or about the way that the model is trained or about how we're evaluating our metrics or which metrics we're using. Find these champions who give you the platform to share those thoughts and ideas. Meet people where they are, but don't underestimate the diversity of perspective and the value that brings to the table. Because as we do this work, as we bring those perspectives to the table, we're more likely to build and design models that work for a diversity of users and that intentionally build for everyone and that build a safer and more inclusive set of product experiences and hopefully a safer and more inclusive world. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me today. Um, I'm excited to continue the conversation with all of you about how we build for and with everyone. Thank you. Thank you.